my name is Jonathan Moses. I'm one of the national organisers of the Right to Roam campaign. Uh, we've just been doing a Skillshare workshop in Bristol, uh, basically to teach people what their rights are when they're trespassing on private land, uh, to give them the skills and the confidence to uh, deal with confrontation if they're uh, approached by landowners or gamekeepers or anyone like that, uh, and also to teach them some basic mapping and research skills so that they can start telling stories about the land that they trespass on uh, and what's going on on those estates. For most people, they don't want to trespass because they don't want to be shouted at by a farmer and, and maybe even have a gun tucked under their arm. Well, that's the exact reason that we're doing these workshops, so that people have strategies in place that give them the confidence to deal with those situations uh, and know where the rights are and where they stand. Surely trespassing is illegal or lawful or something? Uh, a common misconception. In fact, uh, trespassing is at best only a civil offence, uh, which means that in reality landowners aren't going to be able to take you to court or really do anything about your presence on that land. It's only if you commit damage, uh, use violence or disrupt any lawful activity that you can get into criminal trouble. So uh, trespassing pass away, do it peacefully, do it freely, be happy. You look like the sort of person that might have uh, confronted a few landowners, or they may have confronted you in the past. What are those sort of encounters like in your experience? Uh, I find them quite entertaining now, uh, for the most part, but that's probably because I'm a you know, more, more brazen, cocky uh, sort of guy. Um, but I, do, I would say that actually once, once they realise you're not going anywhere and that you've really stood your ground and asserted your rights, uh, the whole kind of manner of the conversation can often change. And often you can find yourself having strange bits of agreement, even with the people that you're chatting to, or, or some common interests as well. So, uh, you know, I ended up spending an hour arguing with the gamekeeper of the Englefield estate. Um, but actually, by the end of that conversation, we'd agreed on the birds that we like, we talked about some of the kind of protection issues that were going on in the countryside. Uh, we found a little bit of common ground. So you can be surprised by the sort of conversa- conversations you have. And you can also maybe disagree if they say they want you to leave in that direction. You might say, well, actually, my car is over that way. Indeed. Exactly, yeah. So you can determine which direction you leave uh, at any given moment. So you can happily kind of carry on on the route uh, that you've been going on anyway. So how do people follow this stuff? Uh, I suppose it's all online these days, isn't it? Uh, I'm afraid it is all online these days, yes. So uh, if you go to uh, rightsforrome.org.uk, you can sign up to our mailing list there. Uh, we're also on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff as well. So that's the easiest way to get in touch with the campaign. We've also got a, a flowering network of local groups uh, that are happening. So if you drop an email to rightsforrome2020 at gmail.com, uh, get in touch with us there, tell you us where you're based, uh, and we'll see if we can put you in touch with any local activists. Yeah, there's been a lot of activity on Dartmoor. Can you just bring us up to date with how that's been going? Yep, so the uh, Dartmoor National Park Authority reached a kind of permissive agreement uh, with the landowners, uh, which has allowed, uh, on a kind of uh, provisional basis, people to wild camp, and I think up to 80% of the land that they were on before. We've said that's not good enough, that permissive rights uh, are nothing like true rights to wild camp, so we pushed the National Park Authority to appeal the court decision. Uh, They've now unanimously agreed to appeal, uh, so there's a a crowdfunder going at the moment, uh, run through the Dartmoor Preservation Association, that's to raise costs to help support the National Park Authority uh, to revisit that case and hopefully get it overturned.